Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on this episode, let's talk about schooling bass, like bass actively feeding on the surface, pushing shad around or blueback herring, whatever type of pelagic schooling bait fish they may be feeding on. Um, and, and I wanted to do this video because I've made friends with a, a guy, his name's Ryan, his, his uh, son Rhett is uh, being treated for, for cancer at St. Jude's, just like my daughter. And so we've become friends uh, because of that, but also because we both make a living fishing. And he's a little bit different though. He actually uh, guides down in Florida offshore. He captains these big, uh, you know, offshore boats and catches tuna, uh, mahi mahi, billfish, you name it. He catches them out there. And he was asking me the other day because he, he lives kind of on a freshwater pond uh, on the St. John's. And he's asking, you know, man, I, I see these bass schooling on bait fish all the time. How do you catch them? Because they seem, uh, you know, to be f actively feeding but they're just not biting very well. And that is something I can completely relate to. In fact, one of the most uh, frustrating scenarios in bass fishing is to have bass, a big school of bass, especially big ones, actively feeding and they won't eat your bait. And, uh, and that is something that I've experienced many times, you know, especially when you go to a lake that, that has blueback herring um, or even shad too, but like Lake Murray or, or um, you know, a Clarks Hill Lake or any of those lakes that you have very prominent uh, pelagic bait fish type patterns, uh, it can be hard to catch those fish that are schooling sometimes. So I wanna share with you three big mistakes that I see people make when they're fishing for actively schooling fish. So let's get right into it. All right, so the very first mistake that I see people make when they're fishing for uh, you know, schooling bass is that, you know, they make the mistake of thinking that you can just throw just about anything into that school of fish. You know, they're on the surface, they're feeding. Why can't you just throw something into that, that school uh, and they, they bite it? Well, the one thing that's happening with, uh, with those schooling bass is that they are so hyper-focused on one school of bait fish generally, like they're just following around this one big ball of bait. Uh, and as soon as they get an opportunity, they start pushing them up to the surface. That's why you see them, uh, you know, feeding real quick on the surface. It's just this melee. And then all of a sudden it just calms down for a bit. And then they kind of, uh, you know, disappear for a bit. And then they pop back up uh, a couple minutes later. Uh, what, what they're doing is following that big school of bait fish around. And all those bait fish are about the same size. They're the same profile and all that. And so they're hyper focused on that exact size and profile of bait fish. And so if you were to, uh, if they're feeding on a, a school of shad that are like two inches long and you end up throwing a five inch bait at them, they're likely not going to eat it. That doesn't mean that they're not ever gonna eat a five inch bait, but the likelihood that they eat it is much lower than if you throw like say a t smaller, you know, two and a half or three inch swim bait in there. You know, something that is very, very close to the size, if not exactly. So that's like one of the biggest mistakes. And, and that's something that, you know, I had to learn after so many frustrating days of chasing, uh, you know, schooling bass around is that they're so hyper-focused on that one size of bait fish that you really need to match the hatch. It's super, super important when fish are schooling to match the hatch. So that is the first big mistake. All right, so the next big mistake, and this is, this is a really big one too, is not casting ahead of the fish. You have to lead the fish as they're schooling. You can't cast into the middle of that, those schools and expect those fish to hit. Again, you can get lucky. You can catch those fish if you cast your bait right into the center of the school, but generally you want to lead those fish. Usually they're going in a certain direction. They're pushing the shad and, uh, and as those shad start taking off, they follow them. And so you want to cast like four, five, six feet in front of those fish uh, as they're pushing those shad. Sometimes the fish are feeding more, you know, straight up and so they're not moving as much, but they're, they're pretty much always going to be, you know, moving in some direction. And so it's really important not to cast behind them or right in the center of them. You've got to lead them, uh, you know, just right ahead of them, but you can't cast too far ahead either. Uh, that way you're not going to catch them either. So Casting uh, in the wrong location to these fish is another huge mistake. 
All right, guys, so the final mistake, and this is a really hard habit to break, especially for me. I'm impatient. I want to just keep a line in the water. But when you're fishing for bass that, that are uh, frequently coming up and schooling on bait fish, usually it's one or two schools that are, are you know, schooling up. And uh, whenever you have that situation where, you know, the fish will school real quick for, for a few seconds and then disappear for a while and then come back up, it's best not to cast in between those those schooling events. You want to be ready, be at the ready, ready to cast, ready to, to lead those fish like the, the, the I talked about in the second mistake. And, uh, and you can't really do that if you're fishing in between. And so many times, man, you make a long cast and at the length of the cast, those fish start schooling way over to the right or the left and you have to reel in real fast. And by the time you reel in and you make the cast, they're already gone. They're already, uh, you know, subsurface again. So it's all about just staying at the ready and waiting for those fish to come up. It's a really hard thing to do, but if it's a school that is, is actively feeding and it's constantly coming up, they're going to come back up and you just need to make sure that you're at the ready uh, to make a precise cast. So anyways, guys, th those are three big mistakes that I see people make when they're fishing for actively schooling bass. If you fix those mistakes, you can really be more successful. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Also, if you have a topic you want me to do a video on, um, make sure you drop that in the comment section as well. And also, I want to remind everybody that I'm going to be fishing the Dick Hiley Bass Classic, which is a St. Jude Children's Research Hospital uh, benefit tournament. They've raised millions of dollars for this wonderful cause. And uh, I'm going to be fishing with my buddy Scott and we're looking for help to raise money for St. Jude. Uh, our team, um, you know, every single team has to, to raise funds for, for this benefit tournament. And right now we're at about $5,000. And I, I'm looking to, to really, you know, bring in the most money out of all the teams fishing this tournament. So if you wanna donate, anything helps. It doesn't matter if it's a couple bucks, whatever it is, uh, hit that link in the description below and help us raise money for St. Jude, which is near and dear to my heart because my daughter is going there right now to be treated for neuroblastoma cancer. So anyways, just wanted to mention that. Uh, other than that, make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you on the water. Make sure you trust the process.